By now, you may be wondering why I included Ronaldinho in my thumbnail. Firstly, it is because he's my favorite football legend of all time. Secondly, he represents the name of the country that was used as a name for the defense that I'm about to show you in this video, the Brazilian defense, which is so unpopular but very deadly like a python. All right. This position that you're seeing on the board right now is one of the most common positions in chess, especially at the top level. But we are not here for this. I just want you to memorize how the pieces are sitting. The queen sitting on e2, defending the pawn on e4, that's one. And the two knights defending each other, one on f3 and the other one on d2, that's two. And I also want you to remember this pawn structure on the center that I have highlighted. So you can see this wave of pawns beginning from the queen side up to the center. So this is the position that you needed to know all this time. Now let me show you how we can build this position with black pieces and start winning most of the games. Here we go. So we want white to play e4, after which we go pawn to e5. And after knight to f3, we don't want to play knight to c6 defending that pawn, but simply queen e7. <laughs> this is a very interesting defense, you guys, and I've won a lot of games with this. Surprisingly enough, grandmasters have played this defense with much success. Let me show you the game plan from here. Our queen on e7 simply protects the pawn on e5, and whatever white is going to do, we want to play pawn to d6. So that if d4 and d takes e5 later on, we can recapture on e5 with our d pawn and maintain our pawn structure. So it's all about the pawn structure. So after some move, we want to play pawn to c6. And this works well if white plays knight to c3. So our pawn on c6 will be stopping knight d5 or knight b5, period. And somewhere in the middle game stage, maybe we can even consider castling long. All right, after some move, we want to play bishop e6 as early as we can. By this time, white's light squared bishop would be sitting on c4. After you trade off your light squared bishop with white's light squared bishop, you can delay the move knight d7 and instead play queen c7 because your queen on c7 will be defending the pawn on e5 which is what I like doing most of the times and only then consider playing knight d7 pawn to h6 bishop e7 knight to f6 and castle short so this opening is very slow just like the Karakan defense or the semislav but very positional at the same time so now that you know our game plan let's see some practical examples all right so pawn to e4 then we go e5 knight to f3 and queen e7. So the top played move from here according to the Leech's database is bishop c4. Well against this I recommend you go pawn to d6. Sticking to our plan you can see that white doesn't have knight g5 because we can simply take that knight. So they mostly castle shot from here or play pawn to d3 after which you still go bishop e6. Remember you want to get rid of white slide squad bishop as fast as you can but if bishop takes you take back with your queen and if d4 you simply go knight to f6 because even if d takes e5 you can simply take back with your d pawn again if white plays knight g5 you have queen c8 and pawn to h6 later on so if they take on e5 you take back on e5 with your d pawn and now you can see that white can no longer take our queen on d8 which is what they like doing if our queen is still on d8 so they'll play knight c3 and whenever you see knight to c3 the safest I can recommend is pawn to c6, taking away the d5 and the b5 square. But hey, just never think of developing your queen's knight to c6. You can put that knight on d7, for example, and continue playing chess from here. Bishop g5, you go pawn to c6. Just like I said, queen e2, you can go h6. I mean, you are just playing normal chess from here. And what you did with this defense, you guys, is that you avoided tons of theory. So this is one defense that you can play against the king's pawn opening to avoid any sorts of theory. Right now you are just playing chess and I'm sure you already know what to do next. I mean you can even castle long if you want and start expanding on the king's side but I just like castling short. Anyways let's look at some other lines. So back to this position you guys we just finished looking at some possible lines. After bishop c4 I recommended playing pawn to d6 
followed by bishop e6 to exchange that bishop as early as you can but what if white plays knight to c3 which happens to be the top played move in the master's database well against this i simply recommend that you go pawn to c6 remember whenever you see knight to c3 it is high time to play pawn to c6 in order to stop knight d5 or bishop b5 or knight b5 and again if they play pawn to d4 wanting to capture your pawn on e5 well you just go pawn to d6 so that if they take on e5 you simply take back with your pawn and now you can see how fixed your pawn structure still is you just maintained your pawn structure and again avoided tons of theories anyways if they do not capture on e5 right away and let's say play bishop c4 well this time be a little bit careful you cannot just play bishop e6 like memorizing moves because white can play bishop g5 in some lines so I recommend going pawn to h6 here, stopping bishop g5. And after, let's say, castle short, you simply go knight to f6. You start developing your moves normally. Pawn to a4. I like meeting pawn to a4 with a5, you guys, just to play an equal game. And after something like pawn to h3, the safest is queen c7 once again. Remember what I said? Your queen on c7 is indirectly defending the pawn on e5 in case of anything. So that's one beauty of this defense. And after bishop e3, for example, you can simply play bishop e7. And next you are going to castle short depending on what black does. Next you are planning to play king h7. And I should mention to say bishop takes h6 here is a blunder. Because we can simply take that free bishop. And after queen takes, we simply go knight h7. If knight h4 by white, we can take that knight. And if knight e2, wanting to shift all the knights to the king's side, well, we can simply go bishop f6. And after d takes e5, d takes e5. And knight g3, we simply play bishop g7. I mean, look at how we have solved all of white's threats. So this should be a simple opening that requires no theory for you guys. Let's look at another possible line. Well, back to this position, you guys, where white played a4 and then we just played a5. Again, if they play pawn to h3, I mean, having noticed that white has already castled short, if we want, we cannot play queen c7 here. Instead, go pawn to g5 directly. This is a common idea in most of these e4 lines. We just want to go pawn to g4. So this is just another line that you can try out you guys mind you there's no theory here we are just playing aggressive chess and our position is super solid we don't have any weakness at the moment because of this pawn on c6 so if knight to h2 you go rook g8 because you're not going to castle short anyways d5 never think of playing pawn to c5 that's another thing to keep in mind the move you should think of your queen's knight is supposed to sit on c5 once your pawn is already on a5 okay so knight a6 makes a lot of sense to me if d takes c6 you simply recapture with your c pawn look at how solid your pawns are on the center this c6 pawn is a monster defender again if bishop e3 stopping knight c5 well you simply go g4 Knight takes g4, bishop takes h takes g4, knight takes. I mean, next you are ready to go queen h5 and mate on h7. If queen f3, you go knight c7. You know, just playing by intuition here. Rook at d1, knight e6. Rook d3, queen h4. Queen g3, I mean, this is just how the game can be simplified, you guys. And you may end up trapping your opponent in this way. So again, I recommend to study more on this defense, you guys. I use this defense with much success if I want to avoid tons of theories against the king's pawn game. Let's look at the last line. Okay, so we just finished looking at the bishop c4 line and the knight to c3. Now it is time to look at the immediate pawn to d4. Well, after this, I just recommend you simply go pawn to d6. If d takes e5, you take back with your pawn. And if knight c3, remember you meet knight to c3 with pawn to c6. And after bishop c4, under normal circumstances, you want to exchange bishops as fast as you can. But hey, there's no pawn on d2 this time, which blocks the vision of the dark squared bishop. Which is why you want to play h6 first, and then you develop your king side pieces first, knight to f6, and maybe let's say king d2. And you can see that it's hardly easy for white to come up with a better plan here. There is no theory involved, we are just playing chess. You go queen c7 if you want. Let them castle along, bishop e7. You can castle short if you want. Knight h4, for whatever reasons. Go b5, you can just start 
expanding on the queen side it doesn't even matter what white does here you have all the time in this world to castle short if you want just break open the queen side for example after a b you got bishop decks and queen d3 a3 things are already bad for white you guys from here you are going to castle short and start playing chess but hey before i end this video let me just show you a practical game that was played between two strong grandmasters so now a 2551 rated chess player and Fedosev, a 2700 super grandmaster. So white played e4, then black played e5, knight to f3, and queen e7. After knight c3, a super GM quickly responded with pawn to c6 here. By the way, even Timur Rajabov has tried this defense several times. You can check the master's database. After d4, black played d6, and f4 was played. This is where I said, I like meeting pawn to a4, with pawn to a5 but hey Fedosev here played knight to f6 because white doesn't have any threat i mean bishop e2 was played after which black played h6 avoiding bishop g5 or knight g5 already white is out of theory here after pawn to h3 black played queen c7 defending the pawn on e5 indirectly and here white played bishop e3 because what else so bishop e7 was played Clearly, black wants to castle short, right? So white castled short and black did the same. Now, it's just a game of chess with a better opening position for both. But anyways, rook e1 was played and rook e8, copycat style, bishop c4 and knight bd7. How is black going to develop his light squad bishop? Let's see. Bishop a2 was played by white because what else can they do? And black played knight f8, which is the great strategy that I like. Queen d2 was played by white and then bishop e6 now we see another way that black can develop his bishop on e6 so the knight on f8 serves these papers but anyways white played pawn to d5 here bishop d7 is what he played after pawn takes on c6 black was going to take back with his b pawn all right so this is all for today you guys i hope you enjoyed this video if at all you did please be sure to hit the like button as a way of encouraging me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one and remember to subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already and also visit my website www.caspachess.com to check out my courses which are currently going at very affordable prices and i hope to see you soon in my next video